All right, in this video, we're going to go ahead and learn how to dimension a part. Um, so when we go ahead and dimension, we are going to find our command in our annotate tab. So in the top left-hand corner, right next to our place views tab, we are going to find our annotate tab. And when we go ahead and select our annotate tab, you're going to find all of the things that we're going to need in order to uh, create our working drawings in a dimension fashion. All right, so our dimension command is in the top left-hand corner. And primarily what we're going to be using is the dimension command for all of our drawings. And then some of these other features like text and leader text, um, center marks, uh, center lines we've talked about, we'll go ahead and throw in there sometimes. Um, if we have a chamfer text, we'll get into chamfer in a couple weeks. Um, we'll go ahead and use that. Uh, we'll eventually get into our parts lists and balloons. So we are going to use some of these other features, but today we're primarily going to focus on dimension. So if you grab dimension, just like when we use our sketch um, to create our part files, um, it works pretty similarly. All right, there's a few ways to go ahead and dimension. You can click on the overall line and you're probably going to notice these little green circles pop up. I try to avoid clicking on those little green circles. I feel like they just complicate things a little bit. So if you just click on the line and then you drag up, it's going to give you a dimension. And then you might have this window that pops up um, where you can edit your dimension. And this is primarily where we're going to use like the diameter symbol. If we have a degree symbol, uh, plus or minus when we get into tolerances. So we'll have some different symbols that we may need to go in and add for some of our drawings. But again, these don't really apply for what we're doing right this second. So we'll get into these a little bit later. So for right now, you can just go ahead and select OK. And the dimension is going to go ahead and be placed. All right. What we can also do is dimension from point to point. And it's going to go ahead and apply a dimension. Again, this window is going to go ahead and pop up. Um, edit dimension when created. This edit dimension box. Um, so as long as this is checked, this will keep popping up. Um, I would keep it as annoying as it might become. I would keep it popping up for when we actually do need it in a few weeks um, to go in and start dimensioning circles and different types of circles. So that's what all these little symbols are here. Um, again, we'll get into that a little bit later. So I'm just going to keep pressing OK. And then another way we can go ahead and um, apply a dimension is by selecting a line to a line. All right. So I can go ahead and grab my height dimension that way. All right. If you want to get rid of a dimension and you just hover over it, you need to right click and I am still in my dimension command. So I need to press escape. And then if I go ahead and right click on it, there we go. So you have to escape out of the dimension command and then you'll see in your drop down menu um, the delete button. All right. So I'm going to delete all three of these. I'm just going to show you how to apply the three dimensions in the three different ways one more time. So again, if you grab dimension, you can just click on a specific line and drag up or over depending on the way that you want to go out in dimension. And I'm just going to press OK. Now remember, you always want to keep the dimensions between the views if at all possible. So that's why I'm dragging my three inches up instead of going down. Because you always want to try to keep the, the dimensions between the, the two views. right? I can also, with my dimension key active, I can also click on endpoint to endpoint, and it will also go ahead and grab and pull a dimension for myself. And the third way we can dimension is by selecting one line and dragging it down and selecting a second line, and then the computer will know to dimension between uh, those two lines that you have selected. And then we'll drag over. So that's how you go ahead and apply dimensions in three different ways. And again, you want to try to keep the dimensions between the front view and the top view and between the front view and the right side view. Never, ever dimension your isometric view. This is going to be left alone and it's going to be shaded. 
and you're not going to ever apply um, any sort of dimension to your isometric view. All right, the only three views that you're going to ever dimension are your top, your front, and your right side view.